in. Greetings. Happy Friday. Welcome to the Steve Dace Show here live and on demand on Blaze TV radio and podcast. My name is Steve Dace. His name is Todd Erzin. His name is Aaron McIntyre, joined by our good friend, who is the op-ed page editor over at News Me, Newsweek, I should say, uh, Josh Hammer, easy for me to say. Uh, so, you know, this panel will be smart, or at least smarter, with Josh's mere presence on the show. Before we get to today's program, which we'll lead off with in the day's group, which is why Josh is here in a moment, just a, a brief health update, because I know a ton of you guys have been praying for me. Um, yesterday's appointment was a uh, follow-up uh, that was supposed to be routine, was pretty demoralizing. Uh, they actually found... Yet another cyst had emerged that then had to be extremely painfully drained. Um, And um, I was specifically forbidden by both my doctor and my wife from any more travel until this infection is gone. So as a result, I I just I cannot and I hate to do this. It's my hometown, but I I cannot make the premiere event in Grand Rapids tonight. Um, And I'm extremely sorry about that. I've already talked to Justin Barclay, the uh, outstanding talk show host there uh, at the Blowtorch, Wood AMNGR. I'm going to come back later this summer um, and do a make good. We'll come up with something cool. And I'm just very, very sorry um, uh, for all of you that bought tickets. You're still going to see a hella movie, but I I just can't make it tonight. Now, I can tell you, though, I had another follow up this morning and there are no more cysts. The they they have it is MRSA. And so they have me on the one oral antibiotic on planet Earth that apparently actually will treat it. And if it doesn't work, then they have to treat it intravenously. And who knows how long that will take. But uh, it is working. I've been on three doses in the last uh, 17 or 18 hours. And uh, the doctor, I could tell, was very, very pleased. Um, And also, I didn't get tortured at today's appointment. I just had to get uh, rebandaged. And I come in on Monday, and he thinks it's even possible by Monday we'll have this completely past us, except for some scarring. And... um, uh, so I know a lot of you guys have been praying for us. Uh, this appointment, as demoralizing as yesterday's was, uh, this one could not have gone much better. So um, again, apologize to all of our people in Grand Rapids that I cannot be there tonight. Um, I even tried to, I even contemplated, is there a flight I could catch to still make it? It's not easy to fly from Des Moines to Grand Rapids. The only way I was going to make it in time is there's a flight that would have, if everything went on time, no delays at all. And I'm not willing to necessarily bet on that. And what's gone on over the last week, I would have barely made it there on time with like a 20 minute margin. Okay. So I just didn't think it was worth the risk. Um, and so I need, besides, I need to stay here until the infection is gone and uh, it is retreating. So thank you very much for the prayers and uh, I greatly apologize. Um, we've gotten, uh, of course, today is opening day and this health ordeal has uh, taken away some of the uh, joy of the opening day for Nefarious, but you guys have more than made up for it with the amount of emails, social media interactions about how, about how much you enjoyed the movie, how much you're raving about the movie. Uh, Thank you all. I think on Monday, I think I'm going to wait through opening weekend before we discuss those. Just don't want to risk anything that might even approach spoiler. Because I I promise you, if you have not yet seen the film, and those of you who have, you're going to verify this. If you've not yet seen the film, it is nothing like what you think it is. It's even more unlike what you think it is, even after I've warned you about that. And, um, And I don't want to take that experience away from you. And you'll also see that that's why I was never afraid of, of overhyping the movie Nefarious, because I knew that the movie was going to subvert your expectations midway through it, thus resetting where you thought the whole plot and story was going to go. So um, it, 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 it being down yesterday uh, did give me a lot of free time to read a lot of your uh, your feedback. And it was just incredibly honoring and um So many stories of people who brought family members who were unbelievers, young people who typically wouldn't go see anything that was faith based. And they saw this one gentleman said, my 16 year old uh, was just silent. The whole walk to the car. I didn't know what he thought. We got in the car and he finally looked at me and said, I think that's the best movie I've ever seen. So um, I just can't thank all of you enough. I mean, we would not be here without your prayers, your support, Um, the prayers of the righteous are effective and powerful. And um, yesterday and this morning's appointment are, are definitely 
um, evidence of that. So uh, remember, you can still see if where and when it is showing in your area at nefariousTickets.com. That's nefariousTickets.com. And uh, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Greatly appreciate it. All right. Feedback Friday is coming up your way. Uh, it's the Dace Group in a moment. First, I want to tell you about our friends at Jace Medical, though, because I got to thinking about them again today when I found out that this oral antibiotic that they gave me was working and I wasn't having any reactions to it after three doses. So stop and think about this is, you know, one of the worst airborne bacteria infections in, in, in the modern world, MRSA. And my doctor tells me that this is the only oral antibiotic at their disposal they have to fight it. Imagine if there was like a shortage of that, right? I mean, if, if, if I'd gone another 12 hours, I was, you know, this is going to be in my bloodstream. So who knows where things would have gone then. So another reminder, just don't put all your eggs in one basket. You just never know when's the next drug, right? You saw the video yesterday that Aaron played of Anthony Fauci saying on camera, they had to give you remdethasnir because there were no other drugs to treat COVID. Just a, just a total lie. That's not true. And so take your fate into your own hands with our friends over at Jace Medical. Get the Jace case of venerable antibiotics, including the hard to find right now, amoxicillin. When you go to jacemedical.com, J-A-S-E for jacemedical.com, promo code DACE for the discount at jacemedical.com. Thanks to all of you, including Josh, for your patience. It's time for the Dace Group. Your weekly look at the week that was begins as it always does with issue one. Bleep, Lord Nefarious says. If you're an adult and you want to be trans and you do it, great. Yeah. If you're happy, you're productive. I actually Forcing don't it on give the a shit. Like, I'm like, fairly liberal the on the part. issue. Absolutely wrong. Joe Biden is trying to erase women. He's trying to erase women in sports because if he gets through what he's trying to get through, it'll be the end of women's sports. And that's a shame because women's sports has come so far in this country. And Joe Biden's trying to kill it. I mean, we're trying to do everything to make, you know, women's sports better and fair because this is about fairness. Right. I'm about fairness, not equality. Content you don't like or, or hateful? What do you mean to describe a hateful thing? Yeah, I mean, you know, just content that will solicit a, a reaction, something that may include something that is slightly racist or slightly sexist, those kinds of those kinds of things. So you think if I'm, something is slightly sexist, it should be banned? I, no, is that I'm what not, you're saying? I'm, I'm literally asking for a right. single example, and you can't name one. Right, and as, as I've already said, I don't use that feed. But let's, well, then how let, would you know? Let, that I don't you, think this is getting anywhere. You literally said you experienced more hateful content and then couldn't name a single example. Right, and as I said, I, That's haven't, absurd. I, haven't, I haven't actually looked at that feed. I then would how would you know this hateful content? Because I'm saying that's what I saw a few weeks ago. I can't give you an exact example. Let's move on. Get planes coming in and getting them loaded, have medical screening, have security vetting, have diplomatic presence on the ground to make sure that we're putting the right people on planes, uh, but also defend that airport from external threats. Um, that's pretty remarkable. And so for all this talk of chaos, I just didn't see it. Not from my perch. Would, would you mind going ahead and praying with me now, Mother God, Creator God, loving God, holy God, take this your servant made from dust and connect it with the raw materials of stardust to speak in this moment, to say something that brings forward the word you've placed into my heart. I accept my unworthiness for such a task as bold as this, and I seek your guidance as you use me and speak through me. To the end ancestor preachers who made sermons from hymns, moans, and groans, and spirituals from the bondage of slavery speak now through this your descendant. Jay, you've met the Dalai Lama many times. Have you sucked his tongue? I have not. Uh, the Dalai Lama is a very playful human being, and we may see this in a weird, kind of gross, sexualized way. But this is about as sexual as a bowl of plain rice. There's nothing our nations can't achieve if we do it together. I really mean it. So thank you all. God bless you all. Let's go. Let's go lick, lick the world. Let's get it done. Thankfully, Kamala Harris didn't say that. Let's get to our very first question. Josh, would you like to lick the world? Just kidding. <laughs> 
<laughs> He's rethinking anybody... all his life choices right now. <laughs> Every time he comes on. Does anybody know how many licks it takes to get to the middle of a planetary pop? Anybody? No? No? I feel like we need um, uh, aid for Africa or USAID, whatever. We lick the world. <laughs> yes. We lick the... Ch- Yes, thank you very much. Don't have me bust out my Bruce Springsteen on the USA for Africa Please song do. Uh, impression. You don't. You guys don't want that. America doesn't want that right now. It's it's got enough struggles it's facing. But Josh, what was the worst of what you just saw and why? Well, Steve, let me first just say thank God that you are okay. I heard the news earlier this week. Uh, I guess from your wife tweeting on your behalf, I learned just like the rest of the country and the rest of the world knew. So I was one of the many people who was earnestly praying for you. you, And I'm just, I'm just, I'm just delighted that we're here first of all, and that we're, we're having a great conversation. So just great stuff. Um, God is, God is good. Um, so yeah, so, so moving on to what we just saw there. So, you know, some of the other stuff was maybe a little more kind of poke you in the eye, like irritating cringe on a certain level of debased, but the Donald Trump Jr. conversation to me is the most important clip from that conversation. Because if you think about Donald Trump, and he obviously has proven to be, not arguably, I would say he is the greatest pro-life hero in the modern history of the pro-life movement. I Agreed. Mean, I, I mean, that's, kind, that's yeah. kind of a role that he's- He that, pointed that, the that, justice that, that, that overturned Roe. I mean, smashed the shibboleth exactly. of the dam before our faces. I completely agree. Yeah. Exactly. But he always has had, shall we say, an unusual relationship or an, an or an abnormal relationship with social and cultural conservatism. This obviously is the guy who had the Playboy magazine covers kind of in the gilded office and the penthouse of Trump Tower. Stormy Daniels, I mean, you and I both know how this story goes. So anyway, to hear his son there just casually basically reaffirming the basic premise of transgenderism, that someone can get some sort of physical surgery or any kind of kind of amorphous just rethinking of who they are or who they think they are, you know, that is really, really pretty damning to me. And because ultimately transgenderism is not just a lie. It is an affront to God himself because it is God himself who says that man and woman, Amen. Genesis 127, he creates them. So it's very, very disappointing. It's not shocking, but it's disappointing to see him basically reaffirm the entire operating premise of transgenderism and then just say, oh, but we're going to just focus on the kids. And what that's doing there is it's a very pernicious kind of slate of hand is at that point you're kind of forfeiting the whole greater conceptual argument against transgenderism you're just focusing on a paradigm of consent because that's where it breaks down for the children but conservatives conservatives would be remiss to kind of focus exclusively on consent rather we need to fight on the entire concept of Mm -hmm. transgenderism i mean one of the reasons it took 50 years to overturn roe is josh we didn't do that uh, we we didn't we didn't do pro life bills for a long time bills that actually defined what life was and when life began. I mean, does life begin at conception? Is 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 a is a heartbeat sig- is significant in terms of displaying life? We we didn't do that until like in the last decade, and then lo and behold, we started doing that about seven eight years ago. And won't you know that actually got us down the legal road of overturning Roe. We instead did bills like you know which which form of late term abortion can we uh, can you use or not. That was the Carhartt Gonzalez case. You can still, we still have late term abortion. They just wanted to ban a particular practice of it. Uh, when, when the fetus feels pain, we made all of the other side's arguments for 50 years. It was all the Roe versus Wade argument about, a, about the quality of life and not the sanctity of life. He's making the same argument on the tranny issue. And, 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 as if we, and also as if we did not learn, Josh, from the last 30 years with the entire rainbow jihad, once, once we said, fine, bugger each other to hell all you want, just leave the kids alone they're never going to leave the kids alone because it's always been about going to the kids that's the end game of this it's 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 not it's 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 this it's not a perversion of a perversion it's not there you know there's this really reasonable sect of this and then everything else you know just they can't contain themselves this is the end goal the end and of itself of the actual ideology josh is to go to the children that's why it always ends up there every time No, totally. Look, I mean, going back, I mean, you can go back as far as you want, Steve. I mean, going back to Bolshevik social theory, I mean, after the Russian Revolution, do you know who actually first started the concept of no-fault divorce? This is actually one of my favorite kind of abstruse in the weeds kind of conservative facts. The people that literally started no-fault divorce was 1920s era Bolshevik Russia social theorists because Mm. the goal of the hard left, the goal of the Marxist, the Leninist, going back literally at least as far back as Marx himself has been the eradication of the 
the family. We see that time and time again, the liberalization of divorce laws in the 1960s, obviously the redefinition of marriage in the, in the middle part of the last decade, the transgender phenomenon is, ju- is but the latest kind of addition to this long running and deeply diabolical or satanic, we mm-hmm. might say, long kind of steady march. And it ultimately is about undermining the ties that tie the family together and who is at the, who is at the very heart of the family. Why do families exist? Well, they exist, obviously, to secure the next generation that would be the children. So it ultimately all, all, all always comes back to the children. Amen. Todd? Because I agree with every word both of you just said, my worst of the week is Caitlin on Fox uh, oh News. Oh, no, not even close. Or Bruce, no. whatever no, no, the no, hell no. his name is now. It, it, it is uh, the interaction between uh, Musk and that reporter. And I know everybody's like, oh, I destroyed him. He's uh, absolutely. But here's everything that you guys said happened, happened because we have, as, as believers, as conservatives, we've refused to do the work Elon Musk just did. Just ask questions, refuse to accept the premise. No, we try to avoid these questions. Yep. Yes. No, we're not racist. Yes. You're, so I mean, you're the how, real racist. This is how it's depressing. The downfall of Western civilization that you two have laid out have happened because of squishes like that guy that more often than not aren't getting destroyed. They are subverting us. Mm-hmm. That guy wins way more than we do. And we need to accept that fact. And why are we letting Elon Musk, who as far as we know, isn't redeemed in any way is he i don't know i have no idea but he well that's a point i think the, so, I think the, I think the just, babylon b asked him once he's not if billy he'd consider it yeah, he's not billy graham we i, I i'm pretty sure well, that's true yeah. so why why does it why do we not step up like him on a regular basis we have to accept yeah you can laugh all you want at the fact that he got destroyed when he came public but that guy runs journalism that guy runs your schools that guy runs medicine i think josh will tell you that guy runs a lot of the law why we've been running from that guy total dweebs yes. we have been running from these the, the dweebs that used to carry our bags in gym class we have been running from them for the last generation yes. like like they're like they're attila the hun yeah aaron there's no there there there's never ever been any there there both literally and and uh, metaphorically as well there's no substance anytime you push back these people as todd just said i promise you your local school board your local city council your county commission your community leaders esteemed or otherwise who are all wannabe communist apparatchiks there's never any substance there and when there is it's very few and far between and yeah we're only there this is this is where this has gotten us guys i just saw this story pop up on my news feed from not to be actually our lack of of willingness or confidence in engaging and embarrassing the pencil necked dweebs like that bbc reporter it's gotten us to where in minnesota now not only is that state trying to become some sort of a safe haven for chemical castration and meatball surgery of minors in the name of gender that's happening at the same time minneapolis is now allowing a muslim call to prayer to be broadcast on loudspeakers five times a day with no restrictions that's where we get it it's just absolute chaos that's what that's what we get that's Musk the natural- is an alpha male whatever else he is he is an alpha male we don't produce those in the church anymore. In fact, we actually try to push them out of our churches, as a matter of fact. That is, and I'm, I'm bringing up an extreme example to illustrate, that is, that is what happens. The absolute chaos of society is what happens when people who know better say absolutely nothing and refuse to confront. Mm-hmm. My worst of the week, though, I'm going to give this to John Kirby. Just the absolute, and this is, I mean, this, th- there is a high bar for gaslighting, but the absolute shameless gaslighting of saying, for all the talk about chaos of leaving Afghanistan, for my perch, I didn't see anything. There were literally Afghanis right. s- struggling Holding and hanging on to on planes, to planes took off. and dropping off to planes to their deaths yeah. as they as they took off. I just that took the cake for me this that's, week. That's that's a great point, Aaron. Exit question: On a scale of one to ten, get ready. This is Josh's favorite. This is Josh's favorite part. <laughs> With one being the odds, Joe Biden knows that yesterday he said it's time to lick the world. And 10 being the odds that Lindsey Graham knows damn well that he said it. (laughs) (laughs) Did I break you finally? I love it so much. (laughs) (laughs) Rate this week's level of total depravity, Aaron. Uh, The last couple of weeks, I'm at like a seven. Todd. Ten. Josh. 
Uh, I'll go with an eight. Go with an eight. I agree. It's been worse. As bad as that was. It's actually been worse. All right, before we get to issue two, um, a word about our friends over at Preborn. They know that with the overturning of Roe v. Wade, after the justices did so, that Donald Trump appointed, as Josh just pointed out, uh, that uh, the the pro-life fight has become hand-to-hand combat now. It is mom-to-mom, child to child and they've already been doing that at preborn so they're ready and prepared now for this new stage new uh, level of, pro- of pro-life uh, fighting uh, and they do it all with uh, donations from people like us whether it's confronting but gently but confronting moms with the the evidence of the fact they're carrying another separate live human being letting them hear and see the ultrasound of their baby and what they have found over the course of their ministry about 80 percent of the time that pricks the conscience of the mother and she won't go through with killing the child but they know the battle is not over there and so it also comes down to providing post care for the mom, loving them both, uh, whether it is uh, postnatal counseling, car seats, uh, nutrition, etc. All of this is free of charge with donations from people like us. If you want to make one, uh, help them save another 200,000 babies. Dial pound 250 and use the keyword baby. Pound 250 and use the keyword baby or go to preborn.com slash Steve. That's preborn.com slash Steve. All right, issue two. Could Trump be legally barred from the ballot? Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg filed a lawsuit Tuesday against Republican House Judiciary Committee Chairman Jim Jordan asking a court to block elements of the congressional inquiry into his case against former President Donald Trump, calling it an unprecedentedly brazen and unconstitutional attack of an ongoing investigation. It's the latest development in the indictment of trumped-up charges against former President Trump. And the future remains anything that's certain as Trump faces the results of a forthcoming grand jury in Georgia over supposed election tampering and in D.C. with supposed mishandling of classified documents. Numerous cans of worms are being opened up about what a subsequent potential conviction could mean for Trump's presidential aspirations. So we chose this topic, Josh, because we were having you. And we have discussed this at length. And really, we want somebody who actually knows what they're talking about to answer a hypothesis that we have here, okay? That with the social compact broken and the Constitution a dead letter to the other side, you know, precedent, stare decisis, none of that that matters now. It's just, it's will to power stuff. That's why I think he's going to be convicted in New York. 12% of Manhattanites voted for Trump. So that's from the same jury pool that's going to convict him, the same one that indicted him with 34 felonies, okay? Is it possible, straight up, that they could come up with something where one of their federal judges put a universal injunction on him being on the ballot? Or enough blue state judges refuse to give him ballot access because he's been convicted or indicted on too numerous of charges and, and, and it, it could deny him the, the requisite ballot or, or I'm sorry, delegates to be the GOP nominee or even to be a nominee on all 50 state ballots. And because and we, we've seen them, Josh, many times going back to Obama, we'll just do what we know isn't constitutional anyway and dare you to find a judge or the Supreme Court to overturn it. We don't care. Go for it. They call the bluff. Could that be the end game here? Now, as a guy that served as a clerk on the Federal Circuit Court of Appeals, what say you? That's our theory. So I'm pausing because like I'm, I'm trying to kind of think this through in real time, right? So there is no federal law. There's no constitutional hook. There is no federal statutory or constitutional legal basis that could possibly be any kind of grist with which a federal, uh, a federal judge, an Article Three judge, could actually issue some sort of universal injunction. I think the more interesting question is whether some sort of ambitious kind of state court judge, especially someone who runs in a state where judges are direct are, are elected on a direct ballot, so therefore they are running under the Democratic Party partisan label, and maybe this judge is ambitious. You know, could they try to fabricate something based on some underlying state statute? And yeah, I, I mean, it's pretty, it, it's fairly easy to foresee that, right? Uh, from a constitutional, like like a federal United States Constitution perspective, it's actually a somewhat interesting question as to whether Congress wanted to legislate kind of additional restrictions as to who can qualify for presidential eligibility. So currently, it's basically just two, it's really just two requirements. You have to be 35 years old, then you have to be a natural born citizen. And, and the latter has been litigated a little bit. 
the former is pretty straightforward. So I think it would be an interesting question whether Congress could statutorily amend the constitutional requirements. I, I'm inclined to say the answer is probably not, actually. But at a state level, you know, where the, where the federal constitution has relatively little heft, depending on kind of how far left a state is, and they're really just trying to kind of listen to far left prosecutors, far left judges, it would be very easy for me to see a, a state court judge or even a potential kind of state Supreme Court try to get feisty. Now, the, the silver lining here uh, for, for the right would be that even if a democratic state were to go this route, it's nearly impossible to see how that sort of litigation does not ultimately end up at the United States Supreme Court. Would they take and it in the amount of time, though, where it would need to be adjudicated to provide relief before it impacts the current election cycle? For example, go back to 2016. I know this very well. I was on the Cruz campaign, as you know. It was, it was a lot of the blue states is where we lost to Trump. All right. He got a lot of his delegates from from blue states. If all those states got together and said, we disqualify him with the state plan that you're talking about, a coalition of them did. And would that could would the would the court take that on an emergency standing so it would be adjudicated in time for him to qualify to win enough delegates to become the nominee? That kind of that kind of lawfare is what I'm talking about. I mean, look, the left can try to get really creative, obviously, but I have to think the answer is probably yes. I mean, think back to Bush versus Gore, obviously. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, the, the, the Supreme Court case that decided the 2000 presidential election. So that case was in December of the year 2000. So it was about a month after the 2000 presidential election. It had, it had already been expedited. And, you know, nowadays, the U.S. Supreme Court actually expedites a lot more cases uh, than they did 23 years ago. They have what's the, uh, known as the so-called rocket docket, the speed docket, where you can kind of get all sorts of kind of, a, you know, emergency motions, emer- emergency stays, mm-hmm. things of that nature there. So uh, I, I, I am not totally blackpilled on this. I think it's very easy to, to foresee some some blue states trying to get creative there, but I, I'm not fully blackpilled on this one, to be honest. Okay. Then in about a minute, what do you think the end game is here then? I think the end game personally is to persecute Donald Trump and to get a rally around the flag effect for Republican primary voters. I mean, th- that has been my theory ever since the Mar-a-Lago raid here in South Florida that happened last August. I mean, when I saw that, my very first thought, well, I mean, my very first thought was obviously, you know, unprecedented crossing of the Rubicon, all of that. But my my second thought, which is really just a corollary of that, is, well, why are they doing this? Well, they're doing this on the one hand, I suppose, because they really despise Trump, going back to Carter Page, Mike Flynn, Russia, the surveillance, all that stuff. But the the much clearer and more obvious and pertinent for the present moment reason why they would take these actions from the documents in Mar-a-Lago to the Alvin Bragg indictment is that they obviously want Donald Trump to be the nominee, Steve. I think that is just extremely hmm. straightforward at this point. They believe they defeated Trump handily in 2020. I mean, you and I think that there was all sorts of shenanigans mm-hmm. and fraud and, and, and unconstitutional actions when it comes to early voting and all that. But they feel very confident that they can defeat Donald Trump. And I think that they, like many on the right, I think, know that these sort of things will probably have the effect that they have had thus far, which is to increase his support in a 2024 Republican primary. All right, let's get to the exit question. Will Trump eventually be convicted in any of these proceedings? Todd? Yes. Aaron? Yes. Josh, what say you? And tell us why you gave the answer you did. I mean, in a just world, the obvious answer is no. Um, I mean, this New York indictment is beyond frivolous. So the Georgia indictment, if we get to that, is slightly less dubious. I think it's not a particularly good legal case either, but it's, a, it's at least a little more serious than this falsification of business record stuff with Stormy Daniels. But I do think that the jury in New York probably will convict unless the judge tosses it out. Because like you said, Steve, I mean, we are a will to power. Uh, that is where we are. That is, is a pure will to power paradigm right Right now, 88 percent of Manhattan voted for Biden. And that's basically it. Yeah, I think they absolutely will. If not, in fact, I think maybe all of them will, because it's just all will to power on on legal stuff. I'm always going to defer to Josh. I'm just not confident that in an era where um, spirit of the age judges looked into the Constitution and decided after 200 years of jurisprudence, they suddenly had universal injunction authority. OK, um, I'm not entirely I'm not entirely confident that any of these will be legal proceedings. That's why I'm I'm wondering what is the play here from a lawfare perspective? Is it to deny him ballot access, to deny him the delegates necessary? Um, but I could also see that they want him to be the nominee. It might even be a little bit of both, depending on which one case might have yeah. a different political aim than the other as well. I will right, we'll come back. Let's talk about the Ukraine leak when we do.
More and more evidence that Americans have absolutely had it with woke corporatism, otherwise known as spirit of the age, genuflection. Uh, here's the problem, though. I mean, the, the demand could go down, but where's the supply of the alternative? Where is the, the so-called parallel economy? Unfortunately, it's still in its nascent stages in many places. And that's why when we have an option to not give money to people who hate us and we sacrifice nothing in the service department, Take full advantage of it. Thankfully, one place where such an option exists is with such a product that we all have to use in this day and age, and that's our mobile phones. So make the switch today to our friends over at Patriot Mobile. Get dependable nationwide coverage on all the major networks if you have to move. Maybe you've moved to a part of town where there's a dead spot, and that's where you're at. you got to switch networks, maybe another part of the country. Uh, however you need to switch, why ever, you can do anytime. Switch to any of those networks and for free. By making the switch to Patriot Mobile. And if you use the promo code Steve, they'll give you a free activation as well. And never forget, military first responders, there's extra savings for you as a way way of saying thank you for your service. So go to PatriotMobile.com slash Steve. That's PatriotMobile.com slash Steve. Or call them at 878-PATRIOT. Again, that's 878-PATRIOT. And use the promo code Steve. For Patriot Mobile. Let's bring back in our good friend Josh Hammer, op ed page editor for Newsweek, as we continue on with your weekly look at the week that was with issue three, the Ukraine leak. Late last week, the Pentagon and Legacy Media were sent into a tizzy over alleged leaked Department of Defense documents, which purportedly showed an inventory of movement of American assets to and from Ukraine, along with updates on the conflict not normally released to the public. Those updates included details about the losses Ukraine has sustained, which fly in the face of the chosen narrative about the conflict. The documents appeared on various social media sites, unlike Jeffrey Epstein's visitor logs and unlike the Supreme Court Dobbs leaker, however. It took less than a week for mainstream media outlets like The Washington Post and New York Times to team up with the deep state to find the leaker. A 21-year-old Massachusetts Air National Guardsman named Jack Teixeira, who was arrested at gunpoint yesterday. Media painted the young man as a racist gun lover. It's unclear how a random 21-year-old National Guardsman acquired said sensitive documents. He faces probably a lifetime in prison, all for the crime of embarrassing the system and exposing its lies. All right, let's get to the 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 documents and what they report themselves. I think I think we could we probably would all agree here, given the swiftness of how they acted to find a Patsy, I'm sorry, uh, suspect. Um, It's it's pretty obvious there's at least some level of veracity to these documents, right? Okay. I mean, the fact that they want to shut this thing down right away, there's there's some level of, of accuracy or, or authenticity to the documents themselves, even if maybe I don't necessarily buy the argument that this thing is on such lockdown and somehow a 21-year-old Air National Guardsman how, reservist. How does that even work? Got his hands on these leaked die. That only happens, frankly, if he is some kind of embedded spy. I mean, there's no way that he accomplishes this on his own, but we'll get to that in a moment. Let's talk about the documents and what's inside themselves. To me, I think this is the number one point, and Aaron, you alluded to it. These documents have a seven to one kill ratio of Ukrainians to Russians. Another way of putting this is 306% more Ukrainians have died since this invasion began than Russians have. 306%. This isn't exactly the... The war of attrition uh, that uh, we have been uh, given here in the United States via regime media. So let's start with that first and foremost. With that level of kill ratio, what is the end game here? How does this end? Todd, I'll start with you. Uh, Ask Big Pharma. Because this is... Ukraine is just resetting everything. We're, We're told... There's this big problem that had to be solved. We had a lockdown. We had a mask. We had to take the magic vaccine. And now it turns out that it's pharma people getting super, super rich selling their wares. So it's something like that is happening here. Because here's we don't know any of this until now. Mm -hmm. What we do know is, you know, trips from movie stars and Bono I'm reliably told that the redux of pride in the name of love is coming out early morning 2023 a shot rings out in a Ukrainian sky are you serious yes I mean but that's how I 
I have no answers other than preposterous. You mean where the president this. of the United States went there to downtown Kiev with Secret Service and bomb sirens went off and no one covered or protected the president and yes. everybody just kept walking? Yes. You mean that kind of performance so art? What We can't have a conversation on this topic that is too preposterous. I don't agree. I, or I don't disagree. Like, I, I don't know what's happening over I there. None. I just know that everything they're telling me is not true. Yeah. Or if it is true, it's not true from the vantage point or perspective they're telling it to me from. Yeah. Aaron, what say you? Yeah, this is why I have never really felt bad about just ignoring Ukraine. Now, there are obviously innocents in the crossfire. That's why this is immoral on its face. But I don't believe anything from the get go. I don't believe any of this because it was just a war of battling uh, propaganda from the very beginning. And so I just made the decision, and I think you did to some degree as well, or to probably the same or greater de- degree, actually, that anything, any news out of this conflict yes. is to be taken with supreme skepticism to, to, from to the, the outset. Very quickly to that point, you guys don't know this because I didn't give you the original script. This issue was not in the original rundown for today. I added it at the last minute when I saw how they marshaled their forces to go after this guy and anoint him as the culprit. Because that's that I wasn't even sure what was in here was true. That's why we weren't going to talk about it. It's only in our rundown because of the way they went after him, which to me verifies the authenticity of what was leaked. That's the only way it made the rundown, to your point, Aaron, that you were making there. Yeah, so this is... so I And... These documents as well, yeah, there may be some level of veracity in the speed at which they were uh, they took this guy down. Uh, probably indicates that they were true. I'm not even sure if we can trust these documents because I'm not even they the Pentagon might believe they're true. I don't know if they're actually true uh, to begin with at, at all. So I this this entire conflict again, just the, the way Todd was saying, it's it's been the way it's been sold has been an absolute scam. So again, we are at a point where it's difficult. How like how would we even go about obtaining the truth? And you can ask that question about just about any issue that we talk about on a daily issue. It is so difficult to find. Basically, we're left with our own basic. Right. Uh, uh, just. Scruples. I mean, do you want to be do you do you want to be the one citing Putin news sources? No. For the, no, I don't either. All right. So I mean, I you know, I don't, I, so I don't know what's true. Josh, what do you think? So my number one takeaway of this whole affair so far is just the utterly galling and gobsmacking lack of institutional competence on the part of our so-called intelligence community on the Pentagon. I mean, yeah, they were able to to hunt down the the alleged leaker fairly quickly, but I mean, to your point, Steve, I am still trying to figure out how the hell a 21-year-old rural Massachusetts Air Force reservist mm-hmm. was able to go into a skiff and just walk out. I, I know, according to the this Washington isn't Edward Post, right? Snowden with some top-level clearance here. I mean, who is this? Are you kidding me? Yeah, I mean, I mean, like it's one thing if you're like a full-time, like career kind of guy deep within the bowels of the intelligence state. You're 45, 50 years old. A 21-year-old kid. I mean, according to the Washington Post writer of, the, of this, he literally would fold the papers twice, so it was like a small square, and stuff them in his pants or his shirt pocket, and, and just walk right out of the skiff. I mean, like what the hell? I mean, if you were a Hollywood screenwriter and you would write that out, the producer would probably laugh at you. Absolutely, this is ludicrous. I, yeah. I mean, so uh, you know, once again, what's happening in real life is even stranger than fiction. When it comes to Ukraine and Russia, I I strongly, strongly just agree with and I would like to just underscore what Aaron said about the need for skepticism and humility about what we are hearing. I have made this point literally since the first week after Putin sent the troops across the border into the Donbass region. No one, and I mean no one, really knows what the hell is going on over there. And that skepticism and that humility, I have argued for over a year now, should militate in favor of not a whole lot of U.S. involvement in the conflict. And by the way, to kind of tie those two threads together, if our Pentagon and our whole defense intelligence structure is so woefully incompetent that a 21-year-old little schmuck can get in there and just walk out with these papers from a skiff. How the hell do we not know that the $113 billion in U.S. aid that was shipped from the Mm -hmm. U.S. taxpayer to Ukraine last year is not going into the most ludicrous and corrupt hands of possible? Absolutely. It it just, the whole thing makes no sense. My experience in politics has taught me that whenever they are willing to admit they're idiots, the truth is worse. 
when they prefer the narrative that we're just this bad at this, we're just this dumb, and they and they and they are they proffer it, they put it out there. They're the source of it. It's because the truth is that much worse. What is a worse truth? That a reservist from rural mass somehow was able to circumvent the entire U.S. intelligence community by stuffing papers down his pants. Okay, or. It's not exactly Mission Impossible. No, is it? no, man. <laughs> Tom Cruise is like, man, why the hell was I dangling from ceilings yes. at, at Langley? I mean, I could, you could just do that. Stuff, stuff, stuff to stuff down your pants. It's a much different movie, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> just kind of walking bull leg. Yeah, rough night last night, fellas. Yes. All right. It, so that's one option. The other option is he's a patsy. The other option is. An enemy was able to get a well-placed asset, that kind of access to spy and to leak embarrassingly on their behalf. To me, it is one of those three options. Is there another one I'm missing? So that my initial reaction was that there actually was a spy. Would it shock you in this day and age and the, so the state of things in our society and culture that our military would not also be compromised? I mean, it already is. Uh, so that was my first reaction. Now that they've moved so quickly on this, I, I'm kind of um, I'm kind of leaning towards the Patsy route. I think this the axiom I want to reset this the axiom of a late stage republic is whatever you think the answer is, it's probably a lot worse. Hmm. So I'm applying that here, and I think there's probably because again I just don't understand along the lines of what Josh was saying how a random this is a national guardsman. I don't even know if he was full time active duty anything like that. That just something doesn't smell right about that. All right, let's make that the exit question then. All right, legit arrest, Patsy. Regime is anointed. Legit as in they're just that bad at security that an Air Force reservist got access to their most precious documents to stuff him down his pants. All right. So that's that's that cover story is legit. He's being anointed as a patsy or they don't want you to know that we've gotten so soft that an enemy was able to get an asset like him so close to sensitive materials. Which of those three options do you think is most likely here as the exit question? Aaron, I'll start with you because you already went. Go ahead. Yes. Reset. Yes. Yeah, yes to all three, Todd. <laughs> yeah, but I'm. I, uh, they overlap to me, and I think the level of incompetence inside, it's not a joke. It's You don't need to be Mission Impossible. There's all kinds of people in our military that are anti-American. When I say Patsy, by the way, I'm talking about, it's, it's another January 6th insurgent. Another white nationalist, Trump voter, gun owner. Yeah, that's how they're That's what I mean. Him. That's the cover. That yeah. would be like a cover story for a Patsy. Josh, go ahead. What do you think? Which one do you think it is? Yeah, I mean, you could see some blurring between the first two options as well, right? But uh, I, I, in a situation like this, I default to just absolute rank incompetence. But uh, I don't think that you can rule out the, the so-called patsy option either. So that brings us to our fourth question, usually our kicker question. And this is something that, that when I got into this business, I thought I'd never ask this question. And yet here we are. Would you leak top secret information and do so patriotically? Could you see yourself if you were in this position where the U.S. government is such anathema to what you believe as an American that you would leak such top secret information patriotically? Todd. Yes. Yeah, see, I could do it too. My problem with Stoughton wasn't so much that he, what he leaked, it was, you know, going and getting cus- um, cushy with Putin after the fact. That was m- much more my problem. Because then you start wondering, well, was, was he a patriot or was, this a, was it an was intel op the entire time, right? To me, I would evaluate this the same way I'd evaluate if I was a Catholic president going to war. I think just war theory applies to this and collateral damage and things like that. But it seems like... Because ultimately, I work for the American yeah. people. I don't yeah. work for institutions, yeah. right? What do you think, it, it. I think it depends case by case. But yeah, I mean, if it's not going to get people killed, then That's sure. a great point. I mean, Assange... And that's the there's Assange a, argument, right? There's, there's, there's a line movements. that you can draw yeah. be, from Assange leaking at WikiLeaks and, and troops getting killed. What do you think, Josh? So, like you guys, my thoughts on the deep state, Snowden, and a lot of this have have genuinely shifted uh, over the course of the past ten years. So, you know, when Snowden first did his leak, and that was ten years ago, that was May or June of twenty thirteen. It was ten years ago. Yeah, yeah, crazy, oh. right? It was 20, 2013. I mean, when that yep. first happened, 
I was like an execute the guy, I mean, full kind of public execution, make it bloody, traitor, all that kind of stuff. And my opinion on him has has slowly changed. I mean, I don't think that he's a hero or anything like that, but I definitely do not agree with what I would have necessarily said eight to 10 years ago. So in a situation like what you're proposing, Steve, I hate to give a, a very loyally answer, but you know, I am called upon to kind yeah. of give those sometimes. I yep. mean, it just depends. It obviously just depends. It depends on kind of the magnitude of the harm. It depends on whether or not you have pursued the internal whistleblower channels uh, to that agency or to whatever, you know, whoever governs whistleblower protection statutes and laws within the federal government. I really don't even know how that works, to be honest with you. But if you have exhausted all of those internal options and the nature of the threat is such that kind of like an imminent danger exists to the American people if you don't speak out. At, at some point, yes. At some, at some point, at some hypothetical point, you absolutely do have a moral duty, a moral obligation to speak out, but it, it just depends. All right. Rapid fire fashion because we got about a minute and a half. Let's get to predictions. Aaron, go. Nefarious will finish in the top three this weekend at the box office. Well, I can't even envision something like that, so I, I'm trying not to even contemplate it because I hate being disappointed. But thank you, Todd. Some form of martial law National Guard action will take place this summer due to unrest in either Texas, Florida, or Tennessee. From the feds, you mean? In well, one of the if feds trying to impose on one of these red states? Uh, well, that or but just uh, it, these cities going crazy. Oh, because they're, they're stirred up. I got gotcha. you. All right, Josh. So I've increasingly, and you know, St- Steve, you and I have chatted about this a little bit offline. I've increasingly been very critical of Vivek Ramaswamy on Twitter and social media, and he allegedly is running for president of the United States. But you know, Charlie Cook of National Review, who's not necessarily my favorite conservative commentator, I have a lot of very serious disagreements with Charlie on a whole host of issues. He had a really good piece, I thought, the other day that Vivek Ramaswamy is not actually running for president. It's unclear exactly what he's running for. Oh, you mean Charlie Cook sh- from uh, from National Review is who you meant? Cook, I thought. You yes. said Kirk. My bad. Go ahead. Finish. Oh, no, 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 yeah. no, no. Yes. Sorry. Charles. Yeah. Charles C.W. Cook. Charlie Cook. Yeah. Um, and, and the argument is that Vivek is running to kind of acquire a mass mailing list, whatever. So anyway, my prediction is that he's not going to get anywhere close to the Iowa caucuses. He will end up bowing out of this thing well before then. I predict that China will invade Taiwan before Joe Biden leaves office. That's bad. Yeah. Whenever that whenever they sense that that is looming. I believe that that's when they will invade Taiwan out of fear of who the successor may or may not be. Josh, good to see you as always, brother. Thank you. Anytime, guys. You bet. We'll come back. Feedback Friday is next. That means it's your turn next. Stay tuned. And greetings. Happy Monday. Welcome to the Steve Day Show here live and on demand on Blaze TV radio and podcast alongside Totters and Aaron McIntyre. I'm Steve Dace. And you can tell us what you think about what we think by emailing the show. Steve at stevedace.com. D-E-A-C-E. I'm, I mean, I'm getting flooded right now with positive reviews for Nefarious. I have, I've had to create its own folder. And I think Monday uh, during our second hour, we're going to go through some of these um, in real time and Good. react to them. I mean... It's just very cool. Thank you to all of you. I really, really appreciate it. Now, one thing I should be telling you, though, on top of rave reviews, um, and this is not, we have no control over this. Major studios can control um, trailer inventory. We're not one of them. So we have no control over what movies get placed in front of us. Apparently, in one last ditch bit of bile to spew at the film. Uh, all kinds of vile red band trailers have been placed in front of Nefarious. So uh, th- I got this word from lots of people, particularly with, with the national theater chains. Um, I got this from lots of people that came went to the Thursday night screenings around the country last night. So be warned, especially nowadays if you're in a theater where you reserve your seats, you don't have to worry about how, what time you get there. You might want to show up about 15 minutes, 10, 10, 15 minutes, depending on how many trailers they show. You might want to show up about 10 or 15 minutes late to try to avoid all that stuff. And if I knew about that in advance, we probably should have even thought about it. We've all been drinking from a fire hose. And, you know, getting down, we couldn't work ourselves down to the bullet points of, you know, crap, what kind of trailers will they put in front of our movie? So, you know, apologies, even though we have no control over that. Um, but uh, so be forewarned, particularly if you're taking if you're taking your teenagers, you might want to give yourself a good 10 or 15 minutes to uh, let some of that bile spew before the movie starts. All right. But uh, we'll get to some of those reviews coming up uh, on Monday on the show. Um, some incredible reviews from the American Spectator, the Federalist, the Saturday Evening Post. 
of all places. Um, so we'll talk more about that kind of stuff on Monday. Uh, you can also follow us on Facebook. Just look for Steve Dace on Facebook, me, we, and Gab. Follow me at Steve Dace Show on Twitter, Getter, Instagram, and TikTok. And you can find me over on Truth Social at Real Steve Dace. And again, the last name is... D-E-A-C-E. For those of you that listen to the podcast, please leave a five-star review if you haven't done so yet. Thank you to all of you who have. And hit subscribe or follow as well, and we are just very grateful for each and every one of those. Also grateful for for our friends over at My Patriot Supply. Um, You may have sensed, you know, I, I don't, it's kind of funny, we all have our own breaking points, you know? And a lot of times it comes down to how much you're exposed by something. We're exposed to something, I should say. Wrong preposition there. <laughs> wow. Um, so um, for whatever reason, like my, my wife's last straw with Joe, with Joe Biden's dementia was yesterday's Lick the World. <laughs> and uh, apparently the clip of the, I, I, the uh, Ireland's prime minister had to literally physically move him to where he needed to stand for their picture because he couldn't figure out his spot. <laughs> And, you know, we all have the moment where we're like this, we're, we're, we're doomed here. Now, because you and we all do this for a living, we hit that moment about late January of 2021, <laughs> okay? Um, but uh, you may sense I might want to be prepared, given the current leadership of the country, which, which apparently is so susceptible to national security threats, you can just stuff sensitive documents down your pants and walk out the front door. Right, so make sure you're prepared with our friends at My Patriot Supply. Get their three month emergency food kit right now. That's breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, even drinks. The full complement of 2,000 plus calories that you need stays good for well over 20 years with proper storage. And you can now save 200 bucks on each kit you buy. Not the whole order, but each kit you buy. You can't beat that but they'll throw in free shipping too, just because. Go to MyPatriotSupply.com. Once again, that is MyPatriotSupply.com. All right, speaking of the last matter we were just discussing, a few notes that I have received just during the break with what we were talking about with the Ukraine leak and with our buddy Josh Hammer during the Dace Group. Uh, Jeanette Schlenker writes Jason Butchel on Glenn Beck this morning, and Jason would know. Jason's a smart dude. Uh, He is a former Army intelligence officer. Uh, He explained that the various variance clearances and type of information available to each clearance. And he said there's just no way a 21 year old would have the would would not have the ability to print out such documents or even access those types of documents. And he was quite detailed um, in uh, in what he would uh, would lead to that happening. Um, but there are the people who disagree. Uh, Michelle Witt says, I was in military and government intelligence for 15 years. I received my TS slash SCI clearance at 22. I was surrounded by 18-year-olds who were cleared as well. Reservist, guardsmen, active duty. His access is not unusual. Okay. That doesn't necessarily deal with Jason's point, though. Uh, Jay, that, at least as far as uh, Ms. Schlinker was telling us, because I didn't hear it this morning. That how would he get access to print that information off to stuff it down his pants, right? It's one thing to have exposure to something digitally, and it's 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 behind some kind of a secure server, uh, right? Okay, it, it's another thing um, to you know. I'm just running. Hold on, guys, I'm running late. Got some stuff here on the dot matrix. Okay, like how did you print it off? All right, where would he have gotten the ability to do that? I think that's an interesting distinction. Um, Rich says. Access to the JWix is open to anyone who has TS slash SCI clearance and need to know. I'm guessing his job gave him both. Age and rank doesn't matter. That's another person. But we're still left with the Jason Butchel question of how was he able to print this stuff off and just walk off with it and get access to do that. Um, Lisa Tobias says, I was a Marine Reserver, so there's no way a 21-year-old had that kind of access. So... And then Belinda says, I heard on Stuart Varney today that he was a tech operator where these docs passed through him, so he had to have high clearance. But we're still back to the question that Jason raised, which was, where would you have the ability just to print stuff off? I mean, I, I would think the ability to print off hard, if you have that level of clearance, and if you don't have an, if, if another layer of clearance is not required to print off hard copies of the things you're saying, that's disconcerting, No. Yeah, but more dis- we're we're analyzing this like this is like twenty years ago or during the Cold War. True. Might I remind you that this gen uh, th- this military 
how much time it spends talking about transgender issues. And can we... So, they're all, it's all related. They, they, there's The clown car grows in our U.S. military. So we think soberly about this out here. It, it's a mess in there, just like it's a mess every place else. There's one other part of this that I think maybe we need to consider as well. And I don't think it'll make a difference in his legal defense. Do we know that these documents were marked as classified? Excellent question. And we don't... They were sensitive. Yep. Were they marked as classified? For example, and I get the military is not at all the same animal as the private sector. If I were privy, and I'm not, but if I were privy to Blaze TV's subscriber data and I leaked that out to the press... Am I guilty of a crime? You can maybe stretch some some sort of fraudulent activity, especially if I made money off of that. But have I really committed a crime? No, I can. I committed a fireable offense. I would be fired. But ha- did something I something? Maybe they can sue you for. Even. They could sue me for in a civil way. But yeah. if this is not classified, did he really commit a crime? Which institutions would we trust to go to to adjudicate any of None the questions of that we were just asking? And that is your point, Todd. Where would we go? So Which is, is, it, is, it, is it possible that, that their narrative is true? I, I guess it is. But why would this narrative be true right. when every other narrative they have sold us is this false? This is why they benefit. There's, there's perpetual chaos. We can't sort it out which means we can never have consequences, which just exactly. means the, cons- the chaos grows. And it we just go grows. Circle, yeah, it just, it just yeah, yeah, it cannonballs. You're exactly right. All right, Feedback Friday brought to you by our friends over at Relief Factor. Everyone deals with pain from time to time. It's one of the few guarantees in life, along with death and taxes. But when it happens, we can either sustain it, deal with it, and move forward. But sometimes there is no moving forward because sometimes it comes back day after day. This is what's called chronic pain. And if it's stealing your joy, get a hold of our friends at Relief Factor, a great way to reduce pain mostly caused by inflammation in your joints if it's of the chronic variety. And when you take it as directed, it can absolutely change your life. It's not a drug, but it is something developed by doctors that can prescribe drugs. It reduces inflammation in your body. And if you try the three-week quick start for just $19.95, the three-week quick start for just $19.95, you'll find out why about 70% of those who have tried it join the program permanently and keep ordering it because it works. So if you're living with that kind of chronic pain, try the three-week quick start for just 20 bucks. What do you got to lose for 20 bucks? Relieffactor.com, relieffactor.com, or call them at 800-4, the number four, 800-4-RELIEF, 800-4-RELIEF, or relieffactor.com. All right, let us begin with Feedback Friday. Stephen Franks writes, I'm on the school board in a conservative rural county in Texas. Tonight, we voted to not support school choice legislation currently going through the Texas legislature. They're more worried about not receiving funding. I made my case against the issue, laying out all the facts that public schools are a cancer. I made it very uncomfortable for everyone in the room. Good. Very good. Everyone agreed with my points and then turned right around and all voted to not support the bill. I brought up that this is a fight between good and evil. I said, tell the girls now when a dude wants to shower in the locker with them to shut up and sit down because we don't want to lose our federal funding. We are lost as a nation when everyone agrees with me in private but refuses to stand when needed. I am known as the Todd down here. When it came to mask mandates in school, I again was the only one who voted against it. To back my conviction up, I pulled my child and drove her 40 miles each way to a private school for a year. Shortly after I was converted, you know, I, I've told you guys before, I went through this phase where I was just like listening to everything. We were in the early era of a podcast. They were called audio blogs back then. Okay. Um, you know, ministries and stuff were just beginning to put their sermons and stuff online. Um, you know, I, I, I watched everything on TBN, God TV, the church channel, all those Christian TV channels. I watched everything. Okay. And, uh, I read as much as I could. I was just, you know, I was trying to renew my mind like Paul commands and also trying to discern what's true here with all these various and conflicting views, you know? Um, and I came upon a guy that I've mentioned before, one of the guys that is credited with saving the Southern Baptist convention a generation ago. And it 
it sadly needs saving again. I uh, named Adrian Rogers, a pastor, I want to say from Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, he passed away a while ago, but um, he was giving a message where he talked about a moment where he questioned his calling early in his ministerial career. And he was trying to lead a revival in an unchurched community in, I think it was rural, like one of, rural Louisiana, Mississippi, someplace like that. And like very few people were coming and very few people were coming forward to accept Christ. And he's like, maybe this, maybe I was wrong. Maybe I wasn't called to do this, you know? And, you know, he tries to take him, take a break and he goes out for a quiet moment and he, with his Bible and he opens it up to Ezekiel. And he looks down and he reads these words that God says to the prophet. For though they are a wicked and stiff-necked people, they will know that a prophet was among them. And Adrian said that moment sustain, ended up sustaining his entire ministerial career. Because God, because God taught him at a very young age that his job is simply to convey the message. Whether it's received, how it's received, what's done with it upon reception, none of that is his responsibility. He's the message giver. He's the message sender. So just do your job. As the Bill Belichick patriots are fond of saying, do your job. Just do your job. I bring this up in the context of Stephen's note because we aren't always an easy show to listen to. I don't know how many other shows challenge their audience as directly and head on as we do on a regular basis. The reason why is because I heard this teaching from Adrian Rogers early in my own faith walk and I have implemented it into my own calling. Your response to what I have to say is not my responsibility. My responsibility is what I'm saying. That's my responsibility. Your response to it, though, is not. Engaging whether what I'm saying is correct by your response is a dangerous, dangerous game. It doesn't mean to be completely oblivious to it, because you, you could be correct. I might be dead wrong, and I'd be silly to proceed henceforth otherwise. But there's a difference between seeking wisdom in a multitude of counsel to doing what affirms you and makes you feel good. Those are two totally different things. And this is why I have harped so much on conviction on this show over the last couple of weeks. I know, I know you want to be told. I, I, I've been where you're at. I consumed all this content before I came to work in this industry. And I, I, don't know, I don't know all of them, but I promise you I know more of the name people in this business than most of you do because I'm, I've been around most of them. So I know what, I know what is the most popular thing to do. I, I, I know what it is you want. You want to be fed a narrative. None of this is your fault. Continue on doing what you're doing. Vote Republican harder. Watch Fox News more. Silent majority harder. I, I know, I know. The reason why that paradigm was sold to you for so many years is because it's what you want to hear and it gains a large audience. But it's not true and that's why I won't tell it to you. What's true and what sucks. Believe me, I, I'm not fond of this message. Do I need another job? I need to add something else to the do list, guys. No. So I, if anybody is sensitive to what I'm asking of you, it's me. Okay. Nevertheless, this current conviction level is going to lose us a country or at worst, I'd rather lose it now on my watch than hand it over as an almost completely dead carcass to my kids so that then they have to suffer through that. Because those are one of the two fates that are before us right now. Anything short of revival. Maybe you don't think that's true. I wish I did not, but I do. And so that's the show we're going to do because my job's to deliver the message. 
And I get emails like this from Stephen Franks constantly. I can't get the people. We go to all the same churches. We watch all the same shows. We listen to all the same podcasts. We read all the same books. And so I'm just like, all right, man, get busy living, get busy dying. Let's roll. And I looked around and everybody looked at me and said, what do you mean we loan Ranger? I mean, I, I got Hannity's on in 10. Hannity, by the way, telling you now that pro-life, uh, pro-life doesn't, can't win national elections. Dude, 1995 called Sean and wants its arguments back. Okay. We're in a post row world. Whether pro-life can win uh, a national election is, a, is, a, is, it's not even yesterday's argument. It's last century's argument. Okay. I mean, this is, this is the stuff Roger Stone and his wife were doing at RNC meetings in the 80s and 90s when they're trying to get the pro-life planks taken out of the platform. And now apparently Roger Stone's like the secret police of the right. Okay. That guy is. All right. Get the bleep out of here with that. I will let you pollute my children for federal funding in rural Texas does not surprise me in the least. Not in the least. And I bet if you go ask all those same people, they tell you Trump is saving America and DeSantis is the rhino. It doesn't surprise me. We're the problem. We have been the problem this entire time. I didn't believe it when I first started this business. I thought I was going to use this kind of a weapon to even the score, to give our people an equal standing to push back against the dreaded establishment. And then I, what broke me is when I realized most of our people are the actual problem. They let this happen on their watch. They made these kinds of compromises everywhere. Well, you know, I, I'm banging the babysitter and she might get pregnant, so, you know, got to have at least some abortion just in case. Well, we might lose our federal funding. By the way, what are the feds funding? The very pollution that Stephen Franks is trying to get you to stop. That's what they're funding. Not your friggin' crossing guards. Not your sports teams. The infestation is what they're funding. You know, like, we can't go on. We just can't go on without that funding. We are the problem. And that's not a very popular theory, thought. It's not popular with me. That realization nearly drove me out of this business, frankly. I, 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 I tried to get out of it. I couldn't go anywhere else. I was too well known in this business. It was too con- said too many controversial things. Didn't matter how good of a broadcaster I was in other venues, I was unhirable. I was tainted, so I had to stay. I, I know how hard it is this admission is. I know. I, I'm, not, I'm not good with it now, but it's true. We're the problem. They're not going to take this country from us. We're going to give it to them. Mm-hmm. They didn't defeat us. We lost. Now, you can receive this message one of two ways, and it's not my responsibility which way you receive it. But this is how you receive the message. You can get mad at me and shoot the messenger. You can get you be the next guy that gets pissed off when his when his best buddy that he's known since kindergarten tells him your girlfriend's cheating on you. And no matter how much you get pissed off at him for telling you, doesn't determine whether she's actually cheating on you or not, mm-hmm. right? But that that's that's one way to react. Or you can you can let this light a fire underneath you. You can actually it, I know it doesn't sound like it, but this message is actually empowering. Because if if we're the problem. Follow me now. If we're the problem, then guess who also is the solution? We the people. We the people are also the solution. We can, follow me here, stop sucking. That's an option, okay? 
You know, my buddy Jake came to me and said, you're going to be dead by 50 and you're 400 pounds. You need to lose 150 pounds. Could have gotten mad at him. Or I could have, or I chose the, boy, I suck and this needs to stop. So I went with the accountability option. That's an option. That's always been an option. We don't have to just sit here and suck. We don't have to. We can actually like, I don't know. We can we can do what we believe. We can. I mean, possibility, trying that maybe. I, I don't know. We can give it a shot. You know, who knows? I don't know. Just try doing what we believe. Just give that a a trial run. See what happens. Or. We could sit here and suck. But that's your choice to make, not mine. My role is to tell you this truth. As uncomfortable it is for me to tell it to you, as unfun as it is for me to remind you of it. But that's what I'm here to do. And the reason why the reason why Beto O'Rourke nearly beat Ted Cruz in a Texas Senate race a few years ago is because of communities like this small Texas rural community that Stephen Franks lives in. Because they want the federal funding so bad, which comes at the cost of infesting their kids, they let them infest their kids. <clears throat> and because of all those kids you're letting them infest... You're only a couple of elections away from Beto O'Rourke beating Ted Cruz in a Senate election. When that generational harvest shows up at the ballot box, America's chickens coming home to roost. Wasn't that Jeremiah, right? It was. And he was right. Just not in the context in which he was stating it. Have any thoughts? Because I know you do. (laughs) Man, I... I've lived this. I've experienced it. I've taught it. I, I <clears throat> handpicked. I'm very intentional about this kind of thing, about how I raise my children. I, and as, as I've told you before, I, I, I ultimately was wrong about my rationalizations for this semi-rural exurb would be safer longer. And it wasn't. But I look around me here, and I want, it's not like there was another semi-rural exurb, which we have many of here in Des Moines, the satellites. I, I would have been screwed there, too. Which is like, the lesson is like, it's the too smart that by half that I still had in my heart is that of, you know, the, the rope can't slip quite that fast. No, that's by definition, it it will slip that fast. And I, while I view myself as a little bit ahead of the curve on a lot of these things, on that one, my faith has been emboldened because of what my family experienced in Carlisle to see my family stand up for women's rights and keeping porn out of schools and they turned on us like you're gonna make us stand up too and we were cast out yeah so uh but all our faith is emboldened my family is we walk taller than ever before uh and that had a lot to do with how uh you know again intentionally you're not you're not guaranteed it i mean it it the lord is explicit about this you not only are not guaranteed uh, all sunshine and roses this side of heaven, the opposite is almost certainly true. If and it's it's a it's a window into the solidity of your faith. Can it can it stand those storms? So going forward, if you need one of my, I I can't remember hardly any of the movie. Grisham's The Rainmaker. I think Coppola actually directed it. 
I can hardly remember any of it, and I've only seen it once, but it stuck with me so much. And it's just important for you to hear that still small voice. Matt uh, Damon's young lawyer character is going against mm -hmm. John Voight's greasy, experienced, I'm going to crush you, <clears throat> big pharma type, and he's rolling him in this one-on-one -on -one that they're having. But s something happens in that moment where Matt Damon decides, I'm going to stop sucking. And I don't know how, I'm feel but I I I'm saying this, and then we're going to see where it goes. And he just looks him in the eye. And he tells John Voight, he says, or asks him the question, do you even remember when you first sold out? I, I think that's one of the greatest 10 lines I've ever heard in all of movie. It, 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 it rings true to me, and it, that guides me just about anywhere I go. Never, as a Christian man, accept it when somebody sells out right in front of you and acts like they have power in front of you because of it. Do not accept it. You don't have to know where it's going to go from you. You don't have to know if the funding is going to keep coming. If you accept it, you've signed your own death sentence. I promise you. You know, government funding, <clears throat> especially from the federal government, with the exception of first responders, cops, military, although the latter is decreasing, it's always a monkey paw. There are always strings attached. I just thought that was a given in common red America discourse. I thought that was a given. Having seen this in Iowa, <clears throat> you know, during around the first push for a school choice a year or two years ago, and now this uh, this email, it's not a it's not a, a given anymore. And here's the thing, too. This was the. You know, this was true for a long time. I don't know if it still is. Texas is one of a handful of states that that sends out more money to the government than it takes in. I don't know if that's true anymore. You think they could fund their own sh schools? Yeah, they they could. They definitely could. It's not that y'all lack the capacity. It's that too many lack the courage of conviction. That's always the root of why we find ourselves in whatever predicament we're in. Amen. More feedback Friday in a moment. All right, back here on the Steve Day Show, here on Blaze TV, radio and podcast. We'll get back to Feedback Friday in a moment, right after we talk about one of the partners that has fast become one of your favorites. Our friends over at Eden Pure with their thunderstorm air purifiers that have gotten rave reviews from this audience for almost a year now that produce clean, fresh smelling air by eliminating odors, killing mold and mildew, uh, even bacteria and some viruses in your home without any filters. You, you won't be swapping out filters um, or taking the money out of your own pocket to exchange or replace filters in the future. Um, and you can get their three-pack of these air purifiers right now for whole home protection. The three-pack for whole home protection for under $200. That's a fraction of the cost of their competitors, who probably aren't as good anyway. And you can do one in every level of your home, all three, for under 200 bucks plus free shipping, plus free shipping when you go to EdenPureDeals.com. Promo code Steve, EdenPureDeals.com, promo code Steve. All right, let's get to more Feedback Friday. I'll get to as many of these as I can. Jay writes, somebody, someone asked you once where you would move if you, could, if you were to leave Iowa. You chose Tennessee instead of Florida. I finally convinced my parents that moving out of California is the best option, and we are debating between Davenport, Iowa, Florida, or Nashville. I was wondering if you could expand on why you would choose Tennessee over Florida. I greatly respect your opinion. Uh, less humidity. A little bit more taste of change of seasons. There's like a real fall in Tennessee. A real fall. Um, you can experience enough winter. You know, maybe you'll put a coat on. Maybe you'll have a white Christmas. But then, it, you know, be gone, Satan. You know, beyond that. And... Um, I, I love Rocky Top. Uh, it's still pretty close to the Midwest, you know, where a lot of my family and friends and associates are. So that would be why. But I'm totes fine with Florida, too. You know, I'm fine staying in Iowa, too. You know, but that's why I would have picked Tennessee ahead of Florida, though. Why are you laughing? 
<laughs> he was asking an existential question about where to take his family as refugees, and you just gave a meteorological lesson about. <laughs> But he asked Where me, he asked me, it's, he wanted to know my was, reasons and, and I, I was just I love, sharing it them. It was peak days. I love that answer so much. Okay. You, that's a gift. That was, I, I would bless add, human. <laughs> I would add this in as well. It seems like, like Tennessee is right now a popular place to move to, especially the Nashville area. It seems like beyond Iowa and Florida, it needs people like the emailer. Probably a little there bit more. Yeah. So there's that. Did you see, by That's the way, That's a good point. Yeah. What that co sponsor of the bill in Florida that uh, gets the death penalty, gives the death penalty to child rapists, did you see what she said today? I did not. She said this is basically an unforgivable, uh, an unforgivable transgression uh, on, on planet Earth right now. Only God can save you, and we need to make that meeting happen sooner than later. Amen. All convicted child rapists should be executed. All convicted pedo groomers should be executed. Period. End of sentence. I mean, and by the way, that's, can we go back to the, cause we discussed this at length the other day and it came up again in the montage. The Don Jr. comments on, well, I'm, I'm pretty liberal yeah. on the issue. If you actually, if you were to, if you were to make the argument to me, if you were not to say, Hey, train yourself all you want, but leave the kids alone. But if you were to make a uniquely a unique significant singular argument just against child abuse, like if you were if you were if you were to take if you were not to draw a distinction between adults changing themselves and what they want to do to the kids, but but cast itself as an entire child abuse agenda from pedo grooming to to child mutilation. I'm OK with that. All right. I mean, if, if, if you were to come to me and say that's probably first and foremost, the far more dangerous evil facing the, the public right now. Uh, and secondly, it's probably also an easier political achievement to acquire. I'm OK with that. But that's not the same message as I'm totally I'm 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 I'm, I, I'm great if you want to trans yourself. Just leave. that won't work. Now, if you want to divorce the issue in your messaging and, and, and just not even address adults transing themselves and only speak of, in this case, unique levels of, of systemic and societally endorsed child abuse. I'm OK with that. Now, I won't do that because my faith commands me to love my neighbor as I love myself. And the adults that they are that they are cajoling into this deserve every bit as much of truth and grace to being told. What are you do you know what you're opening yourself up to? OK. And the damage that you will do to yourself, as are the children. But I understand that you could make a moral argument that this is uniquely evil to children. And it's part of an overall agenda that targets our children. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Yeah. But that, that, to me, though, that's a different message than, well, I'm pretty liberal on the issue. I don't, I don't care how many times you mutilate yourself. No, 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 no. Not that. If, but, but if you were to make that point as part of an overall protection of children then I, would, I wouldn't have made any argument with it. Just where I'm coming from. Rob Norris writes, what I hear recently in some of your tone and messaging is Steve's way or bust. I don't think that's possible for a Christian worldview to lust after the possible killing of another person by kicking the chair out from underneath them so that they can hang until death. I can see that in my own falling, fallen perspective. Limitation, though, is that is not what I am called to. I can vehemently oppose their work, actions, and influence without moving into a realm of personal vendetta that celebrates their pain and suffering. I just can't reconcile that level of disdain in a Christian worldview. I do appreciate your show and format and think you are a needed voice, though, in the national debate. I, all, I, would, I would just appreciate a greater emphasis on the hope and joy of revival. The irony of this, Rob, is right after I read your note, I read another note from a man whose wife was an avid runner who collapsed and died suddenly. Maybe I don't do a good enough job of this. And, if, and, and that's a very strong possibility. I'm not saying that to be sarcastic. Um, because I do struggle. I do struggle to separate vendetta from vindication. Um from my vengeance from God's vengeance. My struggle to separate those things though is a separate matter from desiring that people are held accountable for the, and, 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 and are meted out harsh consequences for the evil that they do. There is nothing unbiblical about that. There is no, there is no biblical 
teaching that speaks against the death penalty at its root. We can argue as Christians whether we trust a society in its current form to mete out justly such a permanent punishment. I think that's a totally fair point. But the death penalty in and of itself, there is nothing in the, in the scriptures anathema to it. If anything, they advocate for it. If anything, God gave a list of crimes to his own people that called for this penalty. Maybe you're nicer than God. I don't think that's it. Maybe you think that some of those things we don't enforce anymore because aspects of the Mosaic law have been fulfilled and we're in a different era. And I agree with that to some extent too. But that's talking about religious laws and ceremonial laws. That's what they, that's what they dealt with in the Council of Jerusalem in Acts. They had this debate. Hey, now suddenly all these Jewish guys are intermingling with pagans. They didn't do that before. But now they're all, you know, uh, members of different nations under one banner named Jesus Christ. So Jesus is a Jewish Messiah, yet his desire is to save the world. So how do we reconcile that? Do we make, and, and by the way, who volunteers for the job of deacon to go out and circumcise all these adult Greek males? Not a lot of volunteers for that one. All right. So they had this debate. It was one of the first, I think it is the first council in church history is in the, is in the, the council of Jerusalem in Acts. And, and the church fathers came to the conclusion that the, the, the ceremonial and religious practices of, of the Mosaic law were meant and reserved for Old Testament Israel during that time. By and large, nothing wrong if you want to keep observing him. Okay. But, and, and ter- but as, a, as an ecclesiastical matter, they were reserved for Old Testament Israel at that time. And Jesus fulfilled that law. He took that, the punishment for the violation of those laws upon himself. He did so for the moral law as well. But violating the moral law stains our witness as Christians. And so they advocated that the moral law of the Mosaic law was to be kept even by the Greeks or pagans or non-Jews, Gentiles. But they would no longer be held to the moral law or I'm sorry, to the religious and ceremonial aspects of the Mosaic law. So that moral law is still in place. Every society where Christianity has been, except for Anabaptist ones, pacifist ones, but every other society, every form, every form of society or counterculture or subculture that Christians have formed has practiced capital punishment. Every single one of them. Because some things are worthy of death. Now, if you're a pacifist, if you come from an Anabaptist, like a Mennonite or Quaker tradition, you know, I'll hear out your arguments. I probably won't find them convincing, but I'll hear out your arguments. But I, I don't think there is anything wrong with, with desiring justice. I do think at times I cross the line in my anger. On that one, you've got me. So thank you for calling me out. But that's a separate argument. The, the, the links I will go to in search of that justice and whether they go too far, is a separate criticism from saying that we would never want that to happen. That's going way too far, in my view, on the other side. Um, Let's continue. I want to get through as many of these as we can. Amazing how much the rainbow jihad in the 2020s have in common with the Nazis of the 1920s. The rainbow jihadists have effectively been declared as the new master race by the political and media establishment. They fly their sexual flags as a sign of conquest and intimidation. They cannot be questioned nor challenged. They must be bowed down under the threat of losing a job, threats of violence, and now murder, like Nashville. They have shown like parts of Antifa, to use extreme violence to shut down freedom of thought. They brainwash, sexually groom, and medically butcher impressionable children to create a violent and compliant youth, so to speak. They are drugged and injected with substances that alter the minds in order to create a violent victim class. This is happening with the approval of the government and its weaponized agencies. These sadistic, psychotic, rainbow jihadist types will run death camps and execute innocent people with a smile on their faces. Those are the next steps. They are doing the will of every evil, powerful elite while the majority of the people are asleep as this evil rises history will repeat again western culture will be conquered from within by this kind of satanic totalitarianism please discuss like please discuss with like-minded people in your everyday life or those willing to learn do not waste your time reasoning with the woke because they've already given over their souls to the spirit of the age that is from pat 
agree with every word, but at the very end, I still think you at least entertain the idea of wrestling with the woke, that there are people there that can be saved. I'm not saying to perpetually do it. When they make it clear, not a sheep, a wolf, then you know what to do from that point time forward. But I, I would make them show you they're a wolf. I would not assume that you know whether they are or not going in. You would make them show you. But other than that, I agree with every word of this. And the reason why this is true is because both of these movements are satanic. And so they have the same exact kind of characteristics. And for Media Matters later today, remember, please, it's D-E-A-C-E, and we are noon to 2 Eastern, uh, if you'd like to subscribe. Todd, any thoughts on that really quick? Well, it's not either or. Ex- ex- exposing the woke uh, is carries evangelical uh, weight in terms of the eyes that see it outside of that and it does what i mean you are indirectly communicating with the people you're talking about by exposing the woke i i mean i don't think there's any way around it that the woke are the modern day uh pharisees of the cult religion they must be exposed hey paint your life did an incredible thing for me a few years ago they uh, took the oldest photo i had of me and my mama and uh they restored it with one of their master painters and made it look even better way better i mean it's gorgeous and my mom got it framed there it is actually uh, my mom got it framed that that literally just looks like a, a an 18 month version year old version of me <laughs> it just it literally looks like it all right doughy in the middle blue eyes it's the same guy just <laughs> that was me at 18 months <laughs> okay so um they did my mom was extremely proud of it and uh had it framed and put in her home uh where it sits to where it sits today and this is a great thing mother's day coming up father's day coming up birthdays graduations you want to uh, you want to forever your memories so that you can keep them in their best conditions. Get a professional hand-painted portrait created from any photo that you give them at truly an affordable price from our friends over at Paint Your Life. All right. So uh, at PaintYourLife.com, no risk. If you don't love the final painting, your money will be refunded, guaranteed. And right now is a limited time offer. Get 20% off your painting. That's right. 20% off and free shipping which is a big deal. These paintings aren't small. 20% off and free shipping when you text the word Steve to 87204. That's 87204. You won't regret it. Trust me. Uh, Text the word Steve to 87204. Message and data rates may apply. Terms apply. Available at paintyourlife.com slash terms. Again, text Steve to 87204. I'm a teacher at a public school in the DFW era area. Apparently students can wear a shirt that says not today, Jesus with the satanic star and the satanic goat of Baphomet. That's how it's pronounced, right? Uh, colored in LGBTQFU colors as I witnessed this morning. So I asked my administration if a student wore a Muhammad is gay shirt, what would occur? They said they would tell the student to change. Also, the amount of cases of students sexually assaulting, blindside assaulting, etc. And the students are back in the classroom within days are insane. Whatever conservative parents think about their hometown school and how that mm-hmm. wouldn't happen in my hometown, they are choosing to deny the truth about how demonic this has become. That is from Travis in Texas, which is a big state, guys. Okay. It's almost as the distance from Des Moines to Dallas as it is from El Paso to Dallas to drive. It's a big state. This is the second one today from that state, that allegedly Mecca of Red, Red America. Just saying that the parents just are completely not interested, divested from what's going on and they're doing to their kids in the schools. Should, do you see the story out of Florida right now? Uh, got a tip on uh, what Sarah Weaver from uh, Daily Caller. I mean, there's, there, there's a, a transgender teacher who's in a relationship with another teacher in the school. This teacher was found on social media to have threatened to shoot up his or her own school and is still teaching in the school yeah in in other eras we would have had to stop a collection of dads from doing yeah. things in response to that that are yeah. also not lawful and moral yes. okay but but even though they're not lawful or moral 
the fear of that is why they didn't face stuff like these things at the same exact time. Mm -hmm. So... You got a we're fantasy we're, football team to take care of. Though, yeah, we're so, back yeah. to my John Brown theory. You, sooner or later, man, when the law won't defend the law, John Brown will become lawless. John three seventeen.